Hello there, I am Dr. C.N. Okolubo. You're welcome to my YouTube channel where we'll be solving problems relating to business mathematics, business statistics, analysis for business decision, as well as other related topics. I want to encourage you as you go through these videos with me, you have your paper, your pen, and your calculator to solve these problems with me. Also, please do like, share, and subscribe so that you can receive notifications for upcoming videos that we'll be uploading. Thank you. Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me. We are continuing our series on trucks, uh, solving problems in transportation model. And uh, today we are going to continue with one of the methods of solving transportation model, and that is the northwest corner method. I will advise that you look at the other videos that we have uh, given out in the example one as you look at this other one to establish your grasp on this uh, topic. Let's look at what we have on our workboard. Right now, we have, you see on the board, we have the Northwest Corner Method and we have example two. The volume of goods from factories to warehouses in different locations represented in the following metrics. Use the Northwest Corner Method to determine the cost of transporting the goods, beg your pardon. So that we have here, we have the warehouse in Adojiti, Benin, and Calabar. Then we have our factories in Lagos, Kano, and Jos. Now the supply uh, function of our model is usually placed on the row on the rows. Then the demand is placed on the columns. So we have the factories the factory representing the supply and then the warehouse representing the, the demand. So let's look at how we we'll solve this um, problem. Now we have our factory as I said and then we have the warehouse in Adobe and then um, Calabar. Now from this uh, question you will see that we have a demand of 400. The northwest corner method is to start from the top left corner of your matrix of your table the top left corner and you move from left from left to right until all the cells are filled before you come to the next row to fill all the cells before you come to the next row and fill all the cells so that's the movement that we're going to try to achieve so in this case we're having a situation where we have a demand um, from Adobe we have the demand from our door 400 here and then we have the supply from Lagos which is the factory and so since it can add the Lagos can simply supply a duikiti we're going to fill in the 300 volume here we're going to fill this 300 volume here since this one can we can take from or from Lagos we can fill this and this crosses out to become zero and this one becomes what 100 so this becomes um 100. now since we have taken all the supplies from lagos we cannot take anything into and from i mean this benin and calabar cannot get anything from lagos since adriquity had been fully satisfied no, not fully satisfied here but 300 have been taken so we'll move to this cell now, in moving to this cell, we see that uh, Adwe KTC has 100 to be supplied and then we can get from Kano. We, can, we have 1,000 from Kano and then there is an outstanding supply of 100 from, uh, from Adwe. So what do we do? We will now fill in the 100 here. We fill in the 100 and cross this one out to become zero. So we are fully satisfied Adwe Kitty. But Kano, has been reduced by 100 to become 900. This becomes um, 900, just so you can see that. Okay, this becomes 900. So, what do we do next? Now we move to this cell. So, we have demand from Benin, 600. Demand from Benin on this cell. To fill this, we actually have so, and we can get all 600 from Kano. So, what we'll do, 
we'll fill in 600 here yeah? from Kankano. We cross this. So Benin has been satisfied here with this 600. And this one is reduced to become 300. So we see our 300 are standing from Kano. Do we still have 300 uh, surplus from Kano here? And we move to this cell. We remember, we move from row to row. So we move to this cell. The 300 that we need to get from Kano, where do we get it from? So, so I mean, so the 300 supply from Kano, we can take them to Calabar to fill this point here. So this becomes 300. We'll fill this 300 so that this becomes zero. We have exhausted all supplies from Kano. And then we still have 700 here still demanded from Calabar. In order to fill this, we'll go to the next row. This one, Ado have been satisfied, we will not go there. Benin has been satisfied, will not go there. The last point is to get to where to get to Joss. And Joss has 700 outstanding that Calabar is demanding. So this becomes 700. So we have filled this and this has been satisfied. In order to calculate the cost of transportation, we have to take the volume by the cost, the unit cost of transportation. What we'll do is to come to this side and say cost of transport or distribution. Cost of transport or distribution will be um, from the first cell, we are from Lagos to Addo. L to A, this cell, it will be 300 times 30. Okay, the next cell, as you can see, from Kano to Addo, we have 100 times 200, that times 20. Then the next one is from Kano to Benin. See, from Kano to Benin, we have 600 times 20 and then we also have from Kano from Kano to Calabar from Kano to Calabar we have 300 times 30 all right then last but not the least from Joss to Calabar from Joss to Calabar we have 700 times 15 let's quickly do this maths 300 times 30, that gives us 9,000. 100 times 20 gives us 2,000. 600 times 20 gives us 12,000. 300 times 30 gives us 9,000. 700 times 15 will give us 10,500. So if we add this up, can we add this up very quickly? Please use your calculator. What you should have should be 42,500. So that's the cost of transporting the goods from the factory to the warehouse. In some other videos we are going to have, we're going to look at how to check the optimality of these methods using stepping stone or the Modi method. But for today, Let's relish this example and I want to encourage you to look out for the other videos that we have on this method. Thank you very much.